what happens when a musician that happens to be, uh, well, far figure to a young boy, dies before Christmas, but soon returns in a little snowy type form? Easy. You've got this film right here. Let's talk about Jack Frost, starring Michael Keaton, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. Ho, 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 ho. This is Big D's Entertainment Breakings and Reviews. Ho, ho, ho. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, better known to as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1998 Christmas fantasy comedy flick, Jack Frost, released by Warner Brothers and directed by Troy Miller, starring Michael Keaton as the title character, along with Kelly Preston, Mark A., and Joseph Cross. The film focuses on a father and a musician killed in a car accident only to be brought back to, form, to life in the form of a snowman via a magical harmonica at Christmas time. <laughs> this film unfortunately bombed at the box office, so I'm only going to give you a little bit of the story. So let's get into it. Jack Frost is the lead singer in a rock band based in the fictional town of Medford, Colorado. His focus on music and hopes that the band will sign a record deal leads him to neglect his family, including his 11-year-old son, Charlie. Charlie and Jack build a snowman together, and Jack gives Charlie his best harmonica, which he got the day Charlie was born. He jokingly tells Charlie that it's magical and that Jack will be able to hear it wherever he is, Jack promises his wife, Gabby, that he will attend Charlie's hockey game, but misses it in favor of recording a new hit song. To make up for it, Jack then promises to take his family on a Christmas trip to the mountains, but then is called in on a gig that could make or break his career. On his way to the gig, Jack realizes his mistake and borrows his best friend and, ba and the band's keyboards, Mac MacArthur's car, to go to the mountains to meet his family. Unfortunately, Jack encounters a bad snowstorm, crashes the car, and is killed. A year later, Charlie has fallen into depression over his father's death, with Gabby com comforting him at his side during an emotional snow shoveling breakdown. One night, he makes another snowman that bears as much resemblance to Jack as he can remember and plays Jack's harmonica just before going to sleep. The harmonica turns out to be magical after all, as it revives Jack, transferring his spirit into a snowman. Jack attempts to greet Charlie, but ends up terrifying him instead. After Jack uses his name, well, his nickname, Charlie Boy, he realizes that the snowman is his father. So Jack re reconnects with Charlie and teaches him the values that he never got when he was alive. Jack convinces Charlie to rejoin his hockey team instead of continuing to grieve over his death. And meanwhile, Mac continues to be a friend of the family while also becoming a father figure to Charlie. That's all the story I'm going to give to you, okay? The rest, you're going to have to just see this movie, considering it was a big disappointment. So, uh, now you want to know what my thoughts are on the film. Well, I've only seen Jack Frost a few times and what have you. And, well, it's not bad. It's not really one of the best Christmas flicks, but uh, it's a pretty fun little flick. Now, of course, there was already a Jack Frost film, which was a horror comedy, which came out a year before, which I've already reviewed that, but I'll probably re review it down the road since I never got to review its sequel. Anyway, now, here's some facts. The film, well, the costume for Jack Frost Snowman form was created by Jim Henson's Creature Show, and George Clooney was originally set to star as the titular character, and... And the creature shop made the character look like Clooney before he left the project. And Sam Raimi was originally attached to direct the film, but when Clooney dropped out, he dropped out as well. When Raimi was first attached, the film was envisioned as a more direct adaptation of Frosty and Snowman, including originally being developed under that title. John Travolta was also considered for the role of Jack Frost, and Billy Bob Thornton was in talks for the role of Mac. Mac 
Oh, excuse me, Mac MacArthur. <laughs> anyway, the film opened first in Australia on December 10th, with only in America the following day. Henceforth, today is the 25th anniversary of the release of Jack Frost from 1998. But it, did it really deserve the hate after 25 years? Well, sort of, but not 100%, though. Sure, the film still ended up being a big disappointment. It failed to only bring in $34 million in the U.S. against its $40 to $85 million budget. And it lost to Star Trek Insurrection and A Bug's Life. Anyway, and became a big disappointment. The film also sits at a mere 19% on Rotten Tomatoes, where they say, with sentimental schmaltz and uninspired storytelling, to sink this film. Well, that's understandable. The story is okay and why you may not be great, but it's fine and all. <laughs> Cinema score audiences gave it a B plus. However, Roger Ebert was not impressed with this it, or thrilled. He said it's possible for the Jim Henson folks and industrial lion magic to put their heads together and come up with the most repulsive single creature in the history of special effects. And I am not forgetting the Chucky doll or the desert intestine from Star Wars. However, Empire Magazine kind of gave it a decent review, saying, Despite an astoundingly dodgy-looking central character, this is a children's flick that doesn't apologize for being so and in an environment where even cartoons are stuck full of gags purely for the grown-ups. That's remarkably refreshing. And also a positive review came from the New York Times, saying, As one more Hollywood effort to look on the sunny side of fatality, the film is so sugar-coated that it makes other recent efforts <coughs> in this genre look blisteringly honest. On the other hand, it's just cheerful and bogus enough to keep children reasonably entertained. Perfectly understandable. This film is kind of a mixed bag and what have you, considering I've only seen it a few times. But it's fine and what have you. Now, it had a soundtrack released on Mercury Records where it featured Oklahoma's own Hanson performing a couple of songs, including a cover of the Rascal's Good lovin'. Let's see. Um, plus, there was Spice Girls, Swirl 360, Jars of Clay, and a host of others that made the CD soundtrack. The score was composed by Trevor Rabin, and that was pretty good. And not only that, three of Frank Zappa's four children appeared, Dweezil, Amit, and Moonuit. Now, in for our main cast, we have Michael Keen as the titular character of Jack Frost. I'm going to say he was pretty good and what have you. The late great Kelly Preston played his wife and widow, Gabby Frost. She was pretty good. Joseph Cross, I have to say, he was pretty good as Charlie. Very good performance. Mark Addy played Mac MacArthur, and of course, well, of course, Addy, of course, this was, well, right about the time he actually made it, after he had recently appeared in The Full Monty, uh, and of course, he would later go on to do a, um, The Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas, A Knight's Tale, as well as TV Still Standing. There's also others, including Henry Rollins, Mika Burim, Burim, excuse me, Andrew Lawrence, Eli Marienthal. Why does that name sound familiar? Oh, yes. I thought that name sounded familiar. Who, the following year, would voice Hogarth Hughes in another Warner Bros. film that also ended up being a big disappointment at the box office, but became a cult classic, and that was The Iron Giant. He also played Steve Stifler's kid brother in the first two American Pie movies as well. And there's others and what have you. So, overall, I will say 
that Jack Frost might not be one of the greatest Christmas films, but it does have a little bit of a little bit of a heart in it and what have you. So with everything said, I would actually recommend you only give this maybe a one-time watch. I mean, if you're into seeing something like this happen, yeah. If you encounter the 97 Jack Frost film, don't encourage your kid to watch it. If you find this film, then that's the Jack Frost you need to be watching, okay? So anyway, Jack Frost with Michael Keaton, it's fine. It's a fine movie. It does have heart in part in various parts and what have you. So what did you think of Jack Frost from 1998? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you my review of a film I I'm long overdue to give to you. And that will be the anime classic The Jungle Book. So thank you and for watching. And if you like this, consider checking out some of these other festive films. In the upper left hand corner is my review of the holiday classic from 1946. From the well, the late 1940s, which is It's a Wonderful Life, a great classic. Or go to the upper right hand corner and see my review of another fun filled holiday film from Warner Brothers, which also didn't do so well, and that was Unaccompanied Myers from 2006. Or if you would like, go to the bottom left hand corner and see. My spoiler-free review of the recent Amazon Prime film, Candy Cane Lane. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya!